The uh, demonstration that I'm about to perform is called the thermite reaction. And the uh, thermite reaction, and thermite's not a word in your dictionary, it's a trademark name, is a mixture of aluminum powder, so we have aluminum solid listed, and iron oxide solid. And here in Oregon, iron oxide is known to almost everybody as being rust. And using these two very common ingredients, aluminum powder and rust, we'll throw a spark into the mix and this is an exothermic reaction that will give off a tremendous amount of heat. The uh, reason that I'm doing this demonstration is to demonstrate that uh, we've been wondering where are the electrons the whole time. And the electrons in aluminum will be shown in a couple of moments and those are going to be stolen by the iron oxide. So uh, what I've got set up here is a bucket full of sand to trap any fallings. Have a little cat food can here for uh, effect and a little porcelain cup that contains the aluminum powder and the iron oxide. Sticking out of the mixture here is a sparkler, a 4th of July sparkler. And the reason for that is a fuse, so it gives me a chance to run away. So I'll light the sparkler, run away to the side, let the sparks fly in all directions. Some of them will go down into the mix and it'll go ahead and uh, set this off. So uh, let's go ahead and kill the lights and uh, start this reaction. Oh, you see the Bunsen burner, and I'll use this to ignite the sparkler, and the sparks will start to fly. You'll certainly know when we are left with more than just sparks. The uh, cat food can is on fire from the heat. The bucket of sand has some molten iron, some liquid hot iron down below and it's glowing nice and bright and red. The iron that was left after the reaction dripped out of the container, went straight through the cat food can down into the sand and glowing. Uh, sparks, heat, light, glowing red, exothermic reaction. Electrons were uh, given off from the aluminum and captured by the iron oxide. And let's turn on the lights, find out where those electrons were in aluminum, and why they were given away. Oh, in chapter 8, we were concerned with where are the electrons in the atoms. And aluminum, which is element number 13 according to the periodic table of the elements, and this is an element, it doesn't have a charge of plus 3, it's not an ionic form, it's just the atom, aluminum, has 13 electrons. The electrons were transferred. I maintain that three electrons were transferred during this process. Let's go ahead and find out how this happened. The beginning of chapter 8, we studied electron configurations and orbital diagrams. Let me quickly put up enough orbitals in this energy diagram to accommodate aluminum. Down at the bottom, our 1s orbital, which is a small spherical shaped orbital. The nucleus is said to be where these wires intersect at the center of the sphere and this is a small region of space where we expect to find a couple of electrons in the aluminum atom. Next up, 2s orbital, a little bit larger sphere. So might envision having another layer on the outside of this where another couple of electrons might reside. Further up on our energy diagram are the 2p orbitals. There are three 2p orbitals. They're uh, degenerate, said to have the same energy. These are the peanut shaped orbitals. There are three of them. They're identical except for their orientation in space. One is left and right. One is top and bottom. One is front and back. We usually have three different sets sitting out on the table to show that there are three different orbitals. This is not to be mistaken as two orbitals because there are two lobes. This is one orbital with two lobes. This region of space contains zero, one, or two electrons at any given time. Next, a little bit larger sphere, the 3s orbital. And if I go up to the three p's, that'll be enough to accommodate the 13 electrons in aluminum. Let's put our aluminum electrons into here. Aluminum has 13 electrons. We might call it a 13 electron system. There are 13 electrons in aluminum atom. 
two electrons go into the ground state or the most stable, the 1s orbital. We show these electrons as being arrows. One is spin up, one is spin down. A couple of electrons in the 2s orbital for a total of four electrons so far. Let's uh, fill this in with seven electrons and take a moment to uh, evaluate how these last three went in. These three electrons I arbitrarily selected to go in as spin up. I could have selected to put them in as spin down. But the important part, according to Hund's rule, is that they will have similar spins, all spin up in this case, and reside in three separate 2p orbitals. These orbitals have the same energy. You can think of it as one electron is in this orbital, one electron is in this orbital, which would be overlapping at the nucleus, and difficult to show would be another orbital here containing an electron overlapping. We'll fill this up with a total of 10 electrons, showing that the two P's are now completely filled. 10 electrons so far, three more to go. We'll put a couple in the 3S and top things off with one electron in the 3P orbital. Let's do something new, and that is separate our principal quantum numbers 1, 2, and 3 orbitals. I'm going to draw a horizontal line separating the 1 from the 2's and the 2's from the 3's. When the 1 is completely filled with 2 electrons, that corresponds to great stability. This right here, just 2 electrons in a 1s orbital, might be a model for helium with 2 electrons. Very stable. Over here, if we fill up the 2s and the 2p's, the 1s, the 2s, and the 2p's account for 10 electrons. Neon, great stability with the 1s and the 2s completely filled. You can see that aluminum has three electrons beyond neon or above the uh, 2p orbitals. You might say that that corresponds to the periodic table of the elements going out to sodium, magnesium, making the jump over to aluminum for 13 total electrons. Aluminum is a metal. It's to the left of our staircase, our red staircase that separates the nonmetals and the metals. The aluminum barely sneaks in on the left side of that staircase. It behaves like a traditional metal. It loses electrons. The number of electrons aluminum will lose is three. We look at our periodic table of the elements as a tool. These will lose one. These will lose two. And we make the jump where aluminum will lose three. This can also be shown on our energy diagram that these are the three electrons up here in the 3s and the 3p orbitals that will be lost. Let me put a box around them and an arrow showing that these three electrons will leave. And I'll take a pause. I'd like to add one additional topic to this conversation, and that is atomic size trends. Atomic size trends. We can use the periodic table of the elements to almost guarantee trends in periodic size. There are very few exceptions to these trends. I'm going to select group number one to discuss what happens to the size of atoms as you move down the periodic table of the elements. Let me label this group one and start up at the top with hydrogen, lithium, sodium, and I will go ahead and abbreviate with potassium, cesium, and rubidium being just a couple of dots. As we move down through the periodic table of the elements, your intuition might tell you that the atoms get larger. Let me make a small circle representing a relative hydrogen atom size, sodium, and perhaps by the time we get down here to francium, you might have a sphere that's rather large. An atomic size. The trend is because N is increasing. As we move down the periodic table of the elements, electrons are going into orbitals where the principal quantum number n is getting larger. n is indicative of how far away we'll find electrons from the nucleus. 
So in francium, we have electrons that are far away from the nucleus, say in 5s, 6s, 7s orbitals. The trend, as you go down, atoms are getting larger. Let's take a look at a very small portion of period number two. I'm going to make a small segment of a few of the elements in period number two. Let's take a look at the top right of the periodic table of the elements, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. The top right of the periodic table, period number two. Some very common elements found in compounds in life in this segment. As we go to the right, your intuition might tell you that the atoms are getting larger. And that's because as we move to the right, these atoms have more electrons. But in fact, we have experimentally determined that as we move to the right, the atoms are actually getting smaller. Number of electrons as we go to the right increases. We might expect the atoms to get larger because of electron or electron repulsion. Electrons are not fond of one another. They all have negative charge. Might think that we have some swelling in the atoms. That does uh, tend to occur. However, there must be another effect responsible for the atoms getting smaller. And in fact, it's because we are adding protons. Make a little comment up on the board. More protons as we go to the right. Fluorine is element number nine. It has nine protons. Oxygen's element number eight. It has eight protons. The uh, extra electron, if you'd like to call it, in fluorine goes into a 2p orbital. Might think that fluorine's a little bit larger because of that electron. That would be fine. However, fluorine has an additional positive charge in the nucleus. And that additional positive charge is pulling all the electrons in. So our trend is as we go to the right, atoms get smaller. Let's make a little cartoon to show both trends. Doesn't look like much of a periodic table of the elements. The transition metal area is, if you will, shortened. Not very many nooks and crannies, but it's very quick to draw. As we go down, elements are getting larger. As we go to the right, elements are getting smaller. Let's go ahead and do a little sample. Let me propose asking you which is larger, oh, phosphorus or oxygen? According to the periodic table of the elements, Phosphorus and oxygen are towards the top right of the periodic table of the elements. Phosphorus sits below and to the left of oxygen. Let's abbreviate that. As we move down the periodic table of the elements, the atoms get larger. As we move to the right, the atoms get smaller. So which one is larger? Phosphorus is larger because it sits lower and to the left. If you were asked which is larger, oxygen or chlorine, you would have to go to a table of data. And uh, that table has been experimentally determined. This bucks the trend. Oxygen on top, chlorine on the bottom. By that analysis, chlorine's larger. However, chlorine sits to the right of oxygen, so chlorine's smaller. We go to the data, we look up a value. When you have this diagonal relationship, our trends do not help. So, oh, a few moments ago, we did the thermite reaction as a demonstration, and I pulled the uh, little aluminum can off. The molten iron that was formed dripped down through, burned the can, made some holes. Our little bucket of sand is getting full over the weeks from filling it up with molten iron. Thank you.